Right. Um, now, you can ask what kind of fringe shift should we expect, right? How big a fringe shift should we expect? And that means estimating the value of v here, estimating the ether velocity. So we don't know the ether velocity, but you can argue as follows. If you assume that the ether is approximately, sta not stationary, approximately constant velocity throughout the solar system, right? then the Earth's velocity is changing. Right? Here it's going 30, meters, 30 kilometers per second this direction. Six months later, it will be going 30, 30 kilometers per second in the opposite direction. Right? So the Earth's velocity is changing through the ether. Okay? So therefore, we should be able to measure, assuming the ether doesn't move with the Earth, we should be able to measure an ether velocity of at least 30 kilometers per second at least once during a year, right? Because suppose that the ether velocity was matching the Earth here, then over here it would be opposite the Earth, right? So at least at one point you should be able to detect the ether velocity of at least this amount. Make sense? Okay. So therefore a, a value, a possible value for V is about this, the speed of the Earth around the Sun. Okay. Right. Um, so that's the Michelson-Morley experiment. It has been done many times throughout history. The first one was done in 1881, but it wasn't really accurate enough to get a, a clear answer. The next one was done by Michelson and Morley in 87. That's the famous one. Um, and then it's been repeated by different experimentalists many times since then. Okay? I'm sure there's more than this. This is just a summary I found. So if we look at this table, what have we got? So this is the experiment name. This L here, that's the length of one arm of the experiment, right? including multiple reflections. This delta calculated, d calc, this says, that's the size of the fringe shift you would expect if you take the ether velocity to be equal to the speed of the Earth. Right? So if you take this value of the ether velocity, then what the fringe shift you'd expect is here, right? So in the famous experiment here, you'd expect a fringe shift of 0.4 fringes, right? Which 0.4 fringes, what does that mean? If I've got my fringes like this, dark and light, dark and light, dark and light, dark and light, okay? So that's one fringe there. So a fringe shift of 0.4 is about this much. This fringe will move to about there. Okay. So that's what you'd expect to observe. But the next column is what was actually observed within experimental error. And the important thing about the next column is it's all zero. Right? Basically, they never observed a fringe shift. Nobody has ever observed a, a clear fringe shift in the michelson morley experiment. So what does this mean? This last one is just comparing the two values in these two columns. So if you never detect a fringe shift, then that means that the ether velocity is always zero. Okay? So the clear result of the michelson morley experiment is that the ether velocity is always zero throughout the Earth's orbit. Right, so the michelson morley experiment, as I said, said that the ether velocity is always zero relative to the Earth. What this must mean is that the ether is going around the sun just the same way as the Earth is going around the sun. Right? So the Earth's velocity always matches the ether velocity. That's the only way you can explain the experiment using the ether. Right? But luckily, there was already a theory of the ether which was known as the ether drag hypothesis or the total ether drag hypothesis, this one is. And what it said is that the ether should be dragged or pulled by matter. Okay? So even if the ether is stationary in the solar system, once it gets into the Earth's atmosphere, the ether will be pulled along by the Earth. Okay? So that's drag. Drag means that, right? Drag is like this, right? That's dragging. So the ether is dragged by the Earth. Now, if this is true, then you can very easily explain the michelson morley experiment, right? Because you're doing the experiment on the Earth, and on the Earth, the ether is being dragged 
through the Earth's atmosphere. So therefore, you never measure any difference between the ether velocity and the Earth velocity. Okay. So that's one way you can explain it. Unfortunately, there are other problems. So the ether drag hypothesis explains the null result of the michelson morley experiment, but there are some other things it cannot explain. Okay. So I'm going to tell you about one of these things. Imagine that you are on Earth and you're observing a star through a telescope. Okay? So here's you on the Earth, here's a star, and you're observing the star through the telescope. You can see the star because light from the star is going into your telescope. Right? Pretty simple. Right. Now what, su su what happens if the Earth is moving relative to the star? Okay. So suppose that the star is stationary in this reference frame and the Earth is moving relative to the star. Now, if I do the same thing again, there you go. We're having this problem again, aren't we? Okay, I'll use this. Okay. If we do the same experiment again, you see that something dodgy happens, right? Look at the light, the ball of light from the star. It goes in through the side of the telescope. Right? That's no good, right? Light shouldn't go in through the side of a telescope. So, in fact, if you want to see this star, what you have to do is tilt the telescope, right? If you tilt the telescope, then the light goes in the front. Okay. But that means, even though the star is actually up here, if I want to see the star, I have to look over here. Right? So the apparent position of the star is different from the real position of the star if the Earth is moving. Right? And this effect is known as aberration. Okay? The shift in the apparent position of stars due to the motion of the Earth. It's known as aberration. Okay. Um, and you can actually, it's quite easy to calculate a formula for it. The angle theta here, the shift in the star's position, should be approximately equal to the Earth's velocity divided by the speed of light. So this is actually another way in which you can measure the speed of light. Okay. One way this is often explained, by the way, is if it's a rainy day, suppose it's a rainy day and the rain is coming down from the sky, Right? If you are walking through the rain, then your front gets wet and your back is dry. Right? Because the rain is relative to you, the rain appears to be coming in like this. Right? So it's, it's the same effect. Right? Because the Earth is moving, although the light is really coming straight down, because the Earth is moving, it looks like it's coming at an angle. Right. So that's the effect of aberration. It's a real effect, and you can observe it experimentally. The problem is that if the ether drag hypothesis is true, then it doesn't exist, right? Because suppose that the ether drag hypothesis is true, that means close to the Earth, or at least within the Earth's atmosphere, the ether will be dragged along with the Earth, right? That means when light from the star, again, we're having this problem, when light from the star enters the ether, it will be dragged along in the direction of the ether. So it won't go in a straight line, but once it enters the Earth's atmosphere, it will be bent along like this. Let me show you that again. So we're moving a path, something like that. And in this case, it's clear, hopefully, that you don't get aberration, right? Because in this case, the, the motion of the Earth exactly matches the, the motion, the change in the direction of the light. Okay. So if the ether drag hypothesis was true, then we shouldn't observe this effect of aberration but we do. Right. So that left us in, in a bit of a trouble. So we have these two experiments, the michelson morley experiment and these aberration experiments. Okay. And we can't explain both of them. Okay. If we assume that the ether velocity is just a constant, doesn't change, then we can explain aberration. Right? But then we should be able to measure something in the michelson morley experiment. On the other hand, if we assume that the ether is dragged by the Earth, then we can explain the michelson morley experiment, but we cannot explain why we see the aberration effect. Okay. So this was a problem, and it turns out to be a, a critical problem with the ether theory. Okay. Um, and this sets the stage for special relativity. Okay. So I can summarize then just briefly. We started this class with the idea of the ether. Okay? The light has a certain speed. Its speed must be determined relative to something. 
and that thing is called the ether. Okay? So that theory has been around for hundreds of years. Just in the 1800s, people were able to test it, okay? and when they tested the ether theory, there were lots of problems. Okay? There was no single ether theory which could explain all of the experimental results. And this problem eventually led to the theory of relativity, okay, which is what I will start explaining on Thursday's class.